All right, so we have got our revenue in place and it's in order. Now let us quickly come on to the cost part as well. And then we'll link our expenses and revenue at one shot to our income statement. We can link it as well right now. That's not a problem. So we have broadly classified our costs into two areas. Cost of sales focus. This is something what we would be referring as our cost of goods sold or COGS. This is the same cost of goods sold or cost of sales focus COGS. And then SGNA, we have classified further other expenses under selling general and administrative expenses. Selling general and administrative expenses. Broadly classifying it that. So again, when it comes to expenses as well, there is enough research to be made as well to check out. But uh, let me tell you one thing. This company, Big Books Corp, has been really generous in giving us this much of information. If you were to check something for a listed company, the company is not obligated to tell you what is average unit price at which they are selling their service, offering their services or selling their products. They are not obligated to give you that information. They are not obligated to give you the information of how much units of sales are happening. But maybe in case of telecom company, at the most what they say is, we have uh, X amount of subscribers. Uh, uh, let's say we have 100,000 subscribers and average revenue per user, that is ARPU, ARPU, average revenue per user. Now they also call it as average revenue per subscriber. Uh, they will give you an average figure, that's it. Okay, nothing beyond that. But this company has been generous enough to give us historical information in detail and uh, that makes our job a lot easier. You would get this kind of information from a company only if you are an insider of the company. If you are part of the company, then or else if the company is generous enough to give it to you. Otherwise, we'll have to make the best of the whatever macro level figures that we have. So that is something we need to keep in mind. There are a lot many costs involved for the company, but primarily they have bifurcated into two things, cost of sales focus, uh, sales uh, cost of sold goods or goods sold and selling general and administrative expenses. Now, what is the story? Primary raw materials used are papers, paper sheets, printing, ink, adhesives and hard covers. Below is the overall requirement. Now, see, you see here, it's the overall requirement. Paper sheets, printing, ink, adhesives and hard covers. All these, you know, materials are required towards preparing notebooks as well as for writing pads and premium journals. Okay, adhesives or glues, all these are required. Now, you might get all these from a single vendor or you might have a different vendor for each of these products. And if you are a real large company who has been prominent in selling these products, maybe just for paper sheets, you might have multiple vendors as well if you are working on heavy volumes. It depends on that, right? And of course, the cost for each unit also matters a lot. Now in this case, uh, the company has given us a total figure of in order to manufacture each manufacture and you know, be, make it ready for sale. For the first historical year, for each notebook, the company had to spend around, it's the cost of sales, the aggregate cost of sales. So that means for selling how many notebooks First year, the company sold 340 million notebooks. In order to sell 340 million notebooks, the company had to spend $799 million towards the cost of sales, cost of those goods which were sold. And same way goes for writing pads and premium journals. But how much of paper, what was the cost involved towards man? you know, uh, contribute, paper contributed to overall cost. How much did printing ink contribute to the overall cost? We don't have that much of information. The company did not give us that much of information there. Okay, otherwise then it would have been a case study more on budgeting. Then. It would have been an analysis towards budgeting as well. So anyway, that's the story here so far. Good, we have this historical information ready and a historical trend, we can calculate that as well. What does it say further? Gross margin of each segment is calculated as segments cost of sales segmental revenue table below given. SGNA similar story. What does the SGNA include? Employee cost, advertisement cost, rentals, insurance premium, and other miscellaneous expenses or costs. We have these numbers ready. 
all things in place. Now, thing is, they did not mention how much will be the, what will be the forecasted uh, assumption that is not given here. Now, of course, when you are an outsider, uh, even for a listed company, the company does not tell you what is their forecast. They never clearly tell you the forecast. Now, here is where our best possible logic comes into picture. What should we do? Let's come back to our model and finish it off. I'll tell you what to do. If you notice this notebooks, segmental gross margin. I'll tell you what this gross margin is. This is as good as look at this in SGNA. It says SGNA expenses as a percentage of notebook sales. That means whatever revenue you notebook, selling notebooks, you taste this, you correlate this expense as a percentage of that sales from notebooks. This is as well the same thing. So this is called vertical analysis of uh, vertical analysis. Why? Because vertical in the sense it is top down. Okay. You correlate all your expenses against the top line. Now in income statement, what is the top line? Top line is nothing but the first line item that you see in an income statement, which is essentially the sales or your revenues. That is the first thing. So the sales is often referred to your top line. This is also your turnover, what they call it as a turnover as well. Then comes the net income, which is the bottom line the net income. This is referred to as a bottom line because often in your income statement, that is the last line item in the list. So if any, in case, if anyone gets confused, what should be the top line and bottom line, always try to correlate this first line item in your income statement is the top line and the last link uh, line item is the bottom line. Simple as that. So coming back to this revenue and cost, we try to correlate them as a percentage of your top line. The, uh, but in this case for each segment wise. Okay. So there is nothing but 799 million dollars divided by revenue from notebooks so it's around 47 percent so in other words in order to earn 1700 million dollars the company had to spend 799 million dollars in the form of the raw materials and other aspects towards cost of goods sold in order to earn 1000 seven hundred million dollars the company spent around seven ninety nine million dollars let's take this percentage to the right the formula to the right and we have the proportion now you see this has been consistently increasing but that does not mean that proportion will always increase the proportion might be going down why if your volume of sales are consistently increasing okay and what if the cost of goods sold might be going down Okay, that is a good sign because this, as it keeps on increasing, it indicates that you have to spend more and more in terms of percentage. So let us focus this for now. I'll give you an example right now. Uh, meanwhile, what you can do is you can copy this percentage. Oh no, we can't copy this. We can't copy this because then the linking will shift. Let me show you what exactly will happen if I copy this. This should be segmented gross margin. That means writing pads, expenses against the total revenue from writing pads but you see it is incorrectly linked here for the first column i need to manually link it and then i'll change it so i say equals expenses towards writing pads divided by the revenue from writing pads we have the percentage and same way for segmental gross margin for premium journals uh, i have the expenses for premium journals divided by the revenue from premium journals we have that so we know that of the revenue that you have received for let's say segment uh, premium journal 70 percent of your revenue goes under the cost of sales for premium journals that is how it says what should be the story for the next year the percentage now you have uh, multiple approaches to that a either you can take an average of the last three years and uh, take this like for example average we have an average function in Excel. We'll make use of that average of the last three years proportion. And that's around 49%. Now, if I take this percentage, this formula ahead, it becomes a rolling average that becomes a rolling average. Take a look at this average of the last three years. Okay. It's a relative reference here. 59. You see, it's the average of last three years, but now rolling average does not always make sense. It does not always make sense because how can you forecast accurately 
what should be my expenses or revenue five years down the line? It's really difficult. Who would have thought about COVID-19? Who would have thought about the outcome or how can you forecast the, or predict who will win the elections this year? Okay, the upcoming elections and how will the story will be? How will its impact be on the market? How can we forecast that? It's really difficult, right? But to a greater extent, the accuracy would be quite high for the first year. So that is the thing that we need to see for 49%, but rolling average may not make sense. This is one approach. Another approach of uh, forecasting for the next year would be the safest bet would be, yeah, you know what? The performance or the expense part has been closer to around 47, 48% contribution, 52% as well. What if the cost involved towards cost of goods sold does not exceed any more now? What if it remains the same as previous year subsequently for subsequent years? This is the safest bet. Basically, what it means is now think about efficiency, operational efficiency, okay, here or even uh, in terms of not only operational efficiency, but also overall in terms of procurement, your quality of negotiation with your vendor who has a better bargaining power, your supplier or you matters. Let's assume you maintain the same level of uh, expenses as a percentage of sales throughout. This is comparatively a safer margin if I do not have any further information. That is when you take care of this approach.